we give God all the glory. And I'd like to thank, thank our Father in the Lord, our General Overseer, and our resident pastor for the privilege to preach here today. Can somebody say amen with me? Amen. Blessed be God. Hallelujah. Okay, shall we stand? Lift up your hands with me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy, holy name. Come bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. I know that is within me. Bless his holy name. He has done great things. He has done great things. So many great things, Lord. He has done great things. Come bless the Lord. immortal, invisible. You are the only true God. You are the ruler and the possessor of all heaven and earth. We bow at your feet. We worship with the angels and the archangels. We worship with the four living creatures. And we declare that holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The one who was and is and is to come. May it please you, O Lord our God, to breathe your very life into us today empower us by your spirit that we may go into the world and be centers of your power to the glory of your most holy name for it is in Jesus precious name we pray and all God's people said Amen thank you thank you and our theme is Power above all powers. Power above all powers. And our topic is understanding the power arrangement. Understanding the power arrangement. And I read from Revelation chapter 11 from verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded and there was and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world, they have become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. 
the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones, they fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is, the one who was, and the one who is to come, because you have taken your great power and you have reigned. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. The time of the dead that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great. You shall destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. There were lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. Amen. Now there is something that we call divine self-imposed restraint. DSR. Divine self-imposed restraint. This is the situation where the almighty God limits himself by himself. Nobody can limit God. Only God can limit himself by himself. Okay? And he does that so that his purposes will run according to his plans. And that's why sometimes we think, oh, <coughs> excuse me, there are devils. And they seem to be very powerful. Oh, it is because God is restraining himself. Okay, these are situations where his awesome powers are restrained so that it will appear as if his creatures are unstoppable. And these are the byproducts of the fall of man. The fall was an event that altered the power arrangement. That's why you and I need to understand the original power arrangement. On the earth, we must always remember that all power belongs to God Almighty. Psalm 62, 11 says, Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power is exclusive to God. And steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. Now, what is important to us to know is not just that God's power is above all powers. That's important. But what is important to know is that God's power is available to all his children so that no single one of them will feel powerless, will feel vulnerable, will feel as if the world and the enemies they're all descending on you to overpower you. know, the Christian must know that our calling is a calling to power. For every believer to be um, empowered. And now the original. Now, let us re read the original power arrangement from Psalm 8. Verse 3 says, When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Verse 5. Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things, not some things, all things under their feet. Now, there's something we call creational hierarchy. You know, you know in, in, in the spiritual world, they deal with hierarchies. That's why the Bible says in Daniel chapter 10 that when the angel was coming, the prince of Persia withstood him. And because the prince of Persia was higher in hierarchy, the angel from God could not cross. So the, that angel from God had to wait until Archangel Michael came in Daniel chapter 10. And as soon as Archangel Michael came, the prince of Persia 
Give wood. Oh, yes. Yeah, so it's only on earth that people don't know people who are bigger than them. <laughs> but in the spiritual world, oh, yes. They know hierarchy. The moment Archangel Michael appeared, the Prince of Persia gave way. But now the Bible is saying that in creational hierarchy, in creational hierarchy, it is God. It is man before angels. And the reason why you and I need to understand that is because demons are fallen angels. Demons are fallen angels. So in creational hierarchy, you are and I are higher than them. That's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 4, it says, don't you know that we shall judge angels? Oh, yes. That's why in, in, uh, in uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, the Bible says, are they not all ministering spirits sent to minister to the heirs of salvation? So it's not about angels now. Angels know that. That's why when, when John bowed to the angel in John chapter 9, he said, ah, don't do it all. <laughs> because together we all uh, worship uh, God Almighty. Yes, don't do it. So in creational hierarchy, you know, man is higher than angels. But in power arrangement, listen to this carefully, in power arrangement, he did not give man power. That is the problem. And yet he made him the ruler of the earth. He said, let the man have dominion. He put all things, spiritual, physical, all things under his feet, under his control. But he didn't give him spiritual power. Now the question then it, it becomes... If the man is supposed to govern the earth and control fallen angels and control all the forces and yet he only gave him authority and no power, where is the source of his power? Where is the source of his power? And that's, that's where the catch is. You and I have to know the source of power for the man. The source of power for the man is God himself. He did not want you and I to in any way. That's why, that's why we are different from angels. We can call forth. We can call forth the divine presence. But do you know that? That is the greatest weapon in spiritual warfare. The divine presence. That once God is present, every creature takes a what? Oh, yes, by the law of creation. By the law of creation. You know, the devil himself told us that. In Job chapter 1, he says, you have made a hedge around Job. And there is nothing we can, uh, at all, there's nothing we can do. But if you move the hedge, oh, yes, we can deal with the man. But so long as your hedge is there, there is nothing we can do. This is the awesome power of the divine presence. And that's why it is the greatest weapon of warfare that when the divine presence, because you can bring down the divine presence, because you and I can enter into the divine presence, that's the greatest. Once it comes down, everybody goes. And that's why the scriptures tell us in 1 John 4.4, 4, you have overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yes. Yes. See, see, the, 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 the Holy Spirit said to me once, do you know the meaning of that scripture? I said, no, I don't. He said, here is the meaning. In the world are the creatures. But in you is the what? The creator. He said, between the creator and the creature, there is no comparison. There can be no comparison. You see, why do you and I need to, to know all this? Because Jesus said, the moment you know the truth, what will happen to you? You'll be free. <laughs> the moment you know the truth, you'll be free. You know? That's why every believer needs to know the truth. Now, 
The next thing that you and I need to know, it is the goal, the goal of our calling. Every one of us, we have the same goal in our calling in Christ. Everyone, we have the same goal. And what is that goal? It is revealed to us in Romans 8.29. For those he did foreknow, he did predestinate to be what? Conformed into what? The image of his son. Every single one of us. What is the meaning of that scripture? He said he wants you and I to be like who? Jesus. Yes. With the same power, with the same authority. That's why our Lord Jesus Christ said in John 17, in the same manner that you have sent me, I have what? Sent them. I have sent them. The same manner, the same authority, the same mandate. And that's why the Bible says to us that Jesus is the second Adam. You know, you need to enter into the revelation of that scripture. What he's saying is that when you look at Jesus Christ, our Lord, when you look at the power he operated with, when you look at the life that he lived, remember that he didn't just live it here. He's telling us the life Adam should have lived before he what? He fell. That's why he's the second Adam. He didn't just come to save us from our sin. He came to model, to model the spiritual life so that when you want to know the type of Christian you, you and I can become, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. He was highly empowered. You know? You can see the way he dealt with uh, demon spirits. You know? Everywhere he went, and, and, and demon spirits made noise. He said, shh. Come out of him. That's all. Come out of him. Don't just uh, marvel at that. Look at yourself and say, this is the way I'm supposed to be operated. Yes. So, it is great to know that all power belongs to God. But from practical perspectives, it is greater to know that I too am empowered. I am empowered through Christ. And we will come to that. Okay? So when we look at men like Elijah and Elisha in the Old Testament, they gave us glimpses of what spiritual authority is all about. You know, glimpses. You know? You know, when I, Eli, Elijah asked Elisha, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? I'm going, I'm going. What do you want from me? He said, I need a double portion of your spirit. Yes. <laughs> Elisha must have looked at the job. He said, this Elijah's anointing is good, but it's not, uh, uh -uh, it's not good enough. And you know, the difference, the difference was clear. You know, in the way Elisha exercised power, the widow came and said, the creditors are about to dispossess us. <laughs> Elisha said, what do you have in the house? The woman said, nothing. Said, think again. Okay, a cruise of oil. Okay, that will do. Go and borrow basins. You know, and then close your door. Pour, 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 pour. Pour. Elijah, Elisha, he doesn't uh, 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 dirty his hands. Go and be pouring. <laughs> Neman the leper came. Gazi, Gazi, tell that man not to bring leprosy here. Tell him to go and wash in uh, Jordan. Eh? <laughs> when he washes seven times, he will be clean. They say, ah, ah. Ah, the axe, the axe has fallen into the water. Alas, he was borrowed. You say, where did it fall? Oh yeah, cut that piece of wood, throw it into the water. The iron swam. Elisha demonstrated power. Oh yes. And yet, the covenant on which he was doing that is what? Inferior. Inferior. And that's the challenge. You know, Part of our challenge is that we don't know that we are supposed to have power. In fact, in this world, the, the, the way they talk about Christianity is like, you know, 
you know, the rest of you are down here. If you need to see God's power, come and meet. Uh, uh, come and meet us on this side. <laughs> That's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. Because Peter didn't preach that kind of gospel. Come and meet us. No. He said, repent. You know, and believe in Jesus. And you will be filled with what? The Holy Ghost. The promises to you, to your children, to everyone, as many as God our, our Father will call. Yes. They sought to empower the people so that they will no longer be running helter-skelter. It doesn't matter how big you are. It doesn't matter how small you are. It doesn't matter your age. You should know that you are empowered. And you should know how to access the power. So that no witch or, 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 or wizard will come and say to you, you will see. Say, eh? Don't say that again. No. <laughs> say, I will see. Don't say that again for your own sake. Absolutely. So that you realize that, wow, even though the Bible is on every table, it's a book of power. It's a book of power. So that those men of old who understood God's power, they wielded it effectively to God's glory. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Let me tell you what is close to the heart of our God. He wants to see you and I arise on this earth and walk with power. So that when they say that, oh no, this is Nigeria, it's not going to be possible. You say, eh? There is a God in there. Uh, oh, yes. And he makes all things. Ah, yes. I know how that works. Oh, yes. It's not just that God makes all things possible. I know how it works. I know how it works. That's what church is about. So that you and I in church, we will learn how God's power works. Christianity is a gospel of power to restore power to believers in God through Christ. Those who have come. That's some, that's some what I call mystery passages. I show you one of them. It's John 14, 20. Mystery passages in, in the Bible. Jesus said in John 14, 20, on that day, you will know that I am in my Father. You are in me. And I am what? You know, you can read that and move along to the next verse without saying, asking yourself, exactly what does he we mean? What is the meaning of that? What is the meaning of that? Jesus said, you will make a discovery. That's a discovery you will make that the Father is in me. I am in you. And you are in me. No, 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 no. Then you stop. It's okay. If I am in him and he is in the Father, what has he done to me? He has taken me into the Father. Yes! He has taken me into the Father. So that I and the Father have become one in who? In Christ. I and the Father have become one. In Christ. Me. Nobody knows my name. Nobody knows my village. But it doesn't stop me from becoming one with God. Because of Christ. And the moment you enter into that revelation. Then you begin to ask yourself. So what does it mean. That I have become one with God through Christ. God and I are one. I will now have to study the man who carried me into, Christ, into God. How does he live? How did he live his own life? How did he live his own life? Okay? You know, John wrote, before I get to that, John wrote again, 1 John 4, 13, he says, um, um, actually, let's go direct to 16 because of our time. He said, um, so we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love, abide in who? 
Yes. You know, so those who abide in love, abide in God, you know, they begin to unravel the principles that govern this togetherness, this oneness with God. You know. And then in verse 17, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Because, because, now take that because and say to yourself, he says that as he is, so is who? So am I. Where? Absolutely. He said, as Jesus is, so am I. Jesus and I have come together. I have jettisoned every unchrist like thing, everything in me that, that does not, is not compatible with the life and nature of Christ. So that as Jesus says, so I am in this world. And what is the meaning of that? It's not just in my humility. It's not just in my love and kindness. It's also in my power and authority. So see, when they, when, when they say, oh, let's live the Christ life, humility, kindness, they don't mention power. No, they talk about humility, kindness, love, patience, the life of Christ. They don't mention power. Why? You cannot have one without the other. As he is, so am I in this world. So am I in this world. The Bible is trying to say to you and I that there is a mystical, mystical. I tell believers, don't forget the mystical. Christianity is not religion of words. There is a mystical aspect of it. You cannot explain it. That's why it's mystical. You know? I, I tell believers, how, how does a Christian live holy? That's a mystical part of it. That's a mystical. What is the mystical part of it? It is that I confess that Jesus died for my sins. Okay? I confess that he rose again, that I may lead a new life, godly life in Christ. So I go to God and say, Lord, I'm a child of God. I'm your child. I cannot live ungodly life. I want to live godly life. May the Holy Spirit walk godliness where? Ah, absolutely. And they look into your heart and they find that that desire is genuine. Then the mystical comes in. Because you see, when your life changes, you can't explain it. You cannot explain it. So if somebody said, okay, you used to collect bribe in the office. How, how did you stop? Weren't you afraid that you wouldn't be able to pay your bills? He said, yes, I was. So. But one day, something happened to me, and that fear left me. Yes, that fear left me. You know? And since then, I've been bold enough to say, yes, I won't do this thing again, and God has been looking after me. I cannot explain it. But I can tell you that if you do the same thing, you will discover the same thing. You discover the same thing. That there is a mystery about godliness that heaven is lined up against the people who are ready to say, no more. I want to live the Christ life in this world. And it's not only about not collecting bribes and all this corruption that's going on all around here. No, it's also about the power that you can then walk into a place and something is going wrong, some things are upset, and the Spirit says, make a decree now. Just make a decree here. And you make a decree. You come back a few weeks later. Things are there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I went to an office. They didn't pay me for, I don't know, 15 months or something. They didn't pay me for 15 months. So I went to an office. I met the man. I said, why haven't you paid me for 15 months? <laughs> he said to me, why haven't you collapsed? Mm -hmm. we haven't paid you for 15 months and you haven't collapsed I said ah, I thought it's that you don't have money to pay me I don't know that you are waiting for me to eh? <laughs> so I went to him I said Lord look at what this man said he said make a decree he said make a decree change or be changed two weeks they fired him oh 
which is that's power. Oh. That's power. Two weeks they fired him. Another person came, they paid us. There's power. You see, you need to understand that there is power. That they didn't call us to live this life and just left us. Uh, no, no, they can't do that. Now Jesus didn't wasn't left on his own. They gave us power. They gave him power. He came here with power. That's why when uh, Herod said to him, don't you know I have the power? Ah, Jesus said, don't talk about power because you don't know anything. Uh, mm, you don't know anything. <laughs> you don't know anything about it. You know, you see, you see what is, yeah, this drama you're enacting here, it was already foreordained from, uh, yes, yeah, so you don't have any power over me. <laughs> he said to, to the people in John chapter 10, I have the power to put my life down. I have the power to take it up again. Yes, nobody takes my power, my life from me. Nobody. That is power in this calling. And that's why the Bible says that as he is, so are we. And it becomes a journey of discovery to, to find out how this works. Everybody has to find out because that's the motivation, you know, for godly living. The power is the motivation for godly living. I said to believers, you know, when I see uh, believers, I said, do you know what changed my life? It's because after I became a Christian, some people introduced us to God's power. You know, and the moment you begin to thirst for God's power in your life, you know that some things are no-no. You know, you just cannot afford, you know, because they will take the anointing Oh, yes. So that's why, you see, when you understand the way it works um, and temptation comes to you, you know exactly what they're coming for. They're coming for that anointing. They're coming for that power. They're coming for that boldness with which you, you speak and live your life. They're coming for it. They want to do you like something. You know? The Philistines, Judges 16, 20, the Philistines are upon you, something. And when he awoke from his sleep, he thought, I will go out as at other times and uh, shake myself, shake myself. The Bible says, but he did not know that what? The Lord has already, that is it. it the power is not in the shaking. It's not in the shaking. The power is in the relationship. It is in the relationship. The man, the word, when it comes to power, when it comes to spiritual power, two words every believer must know. Obedience and what? Disobedience. Obedience, you are empowered. Disobedience, you are disempowered. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So, Romans 5, 18. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. Verse 19. For just as by one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made what? That is it. Too. That is it. Too. So you see, when you're disobeying God, understand what you're doing to yourself. Understand what you're doing to yourself. You disobey God, you get disempowered. You get disempowered. And so no matter no matter the cost, no matter the pain, no matter the suffering, no matter the humiliation, you bend over backwards to do as God wants. Because you want to retain that power in your life. You want to retain God's anointing in your life. That's why the, the, the psalmist captured this in Psalm 82. He says, they have neither knowledge nor understanding, verse 5, they walk around in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I say you are gods, children of the most high. 
all of you, nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. In other words, even though you and I are created, you know, only inferior to God, a little lower than God himself, yet we are victims of all kinds of uh, principalities and powers. All kinds of elemental spirits are molesting us. You know? Because we don't understand. We don't understand the way the system runs. Now, I want to sh use something simple. Do you know that for many centuries, man has em envied birds? You know those birds? You know? They do their wing like this. And they do warm. They go, go into the sky. A man wanted to fly. You know, if you read Greek mythology, you know about Icarus. You know, he made uh, wings and tried to fly. The wings were too heavy. But do you know that man is flying today? But not in the same way. But do you know what solved the problem? Isaac Newton. It's Isaac Newton. That time, that thing, he told us orange fell down. And he was like, something is causing this orange. Yes, so something is causing it to fall. And that's how the law of uh, gravity. Yes. So man now discovered that ah, you cannot fly you unless you overcome this gravity that is always pulling man. Yes, so you have to overcome it. And so now, the science of lift, you know, he built, he built planes, the, their wings have to be a certain length, then they run, then they generate a, 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 a wind, turbulence going through, and then you tilt the tail, and that wind depresses the tail, and the nose of the plane, uh, oh yes, so, they become magic now. <laughs> you know, but can you imagine a man that says, I don't believe in gravity. This gravity is nonsense. And then he flew up in the air. They say, where are you going? He said, I'm going out. There's no gravity. He opened the door of the plane. What will happen to him? <laughs> now, why did I tell you this story? It's to tell you that there are laws just like there are physical laws, there are also spiritual. Yes, there are also spiritual laws. Because you see, the physical came from the spiritual. And so the, the, the physical cannot be so organized with laws. Gravity, magnetism, electricity, all of these are governed by laws. You know, very fascinating. You know, you know magnetism, that's North and South Pole, you know that. But do you know how all these uh, rockets they send to space? Do you know how they travel from one planet to the other? They can be traveling for, for, for five years, six years. The last one traveled for about 14 years. Where would they carry fuel for 14 years? You know, it's fascinating. But do you know what they do? Let me tell you what they do. When they leave the earth, okay, they want to leave the earth, they will calculate the magnetic pole of the earth. You know, you know, they say like poles attract, or like poles attract, like poles uh, repel. So when they, when they induce the opposite of the polarity of the earth, the earth will push them out. Now, when they reach Mars, when they want to go enter Mars, they induce the opposite, then Mars will suck them in. That's what they're doing. What is that? Laws, laws. Once you discover it, once you obey it, everything is working. Everything is working. And that's why they can travel for years. The moment they leave, they use the little energy they have to move out of the gravity of the planet, and then they induce this polarity, and then the other planet draws them in. That's how they travel. And they can be traveling for years like that. It's laws. So now, the spiritual... Can it be lawless? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Because that's what gave birth to the physical. And so when they say, with one man's obedience, everything that went wrong was uh, corrected. You know? And with one man's disobedience, everything that was right, everything uh, 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 spoiled. 
pinch yourself, pinch yourself really hard and say to yourself, I have to be obedient to God and his word for my own. So, so when, I, when I'm quarreling with my wife, it's not about my wife. No. You know, when I make peace or with her or she makes peace with me, it's not about us. Is that obedience? So, the Bible says, "Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your anger." Some people, uh, one, two months of sun will go down. Okay, so you see, when that happens, you realize that they don't they don't relate obedience to that word to power. That is the problem. Everything that is going on in your life, you have to relate it to power. You have to know that I cannot afford to disobey God because that is the secret to power. I cannot afford. So that's why, see, people, Christians who understand, they leave God, Leo, not because of God, for their own, yes, for their own sake. For their own sake. They bend over backwards to do what God says. And you know, some people, they, they will not do what God says. Do you know why? They said, ah, they say kind, kind. But you know, if I'm kind now, that my mother-in-law, she too, she will receive a, a kindness. No. The people are worried about who will benefit. If it's that my mother-in-law that doesn't like me, mm -mm, I cannot show kindness here. But you forget that when you don't show kindness, power, you know, the, the, the people that are controlling, they say, oh, 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 disobedience here, disobedience here, close, close, close. Yes. They don't say, oh, because of mother-in-law, eh, you can allow. Eh? There's no such thing. It's like somebody saying, gravity, they have made it. But um, if you really need to get down quickly, they can allow. Is there any such thing? No. No. He said, that's why a lot of foolishness, there's a lot of foolishness in the church. There's a lot of foolishness in the church. And the reason is because they don't know how the system works. They do not know how the system works. They think that the system works anyhow. Anyhow. Now, I, I want to go quickly because um, I, I, I see I'm running out of time. Okay. The, um, the, the, when you read Romans chapter 8 verses 3 to 4, you get an idea of the law. You know, for what the law, as the law of Moses could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. Now look at verse 4. That the righteous requirement of the law Okay, some people say they've abolished the law. No, 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 no. He says that the righteous requirement, everything the law expects of you and I, it will be fulfilled in those of us who do not walk according to the flesh, but what? Oh, yes, yeah, spiritual people, they fulfill the law. You know, if you're a spiritual person, you fulfill the law. In fact, you fulfill more than the law. You know, you will go beyond the law. That's the awesome power of being a spiritual person. And what, who is a spiritual person? Okay. John stepped on your toe. They said by the law of the spirit, you should forgive him. Okay. That's the law. Of the, of, of, that's the law. Forgive him. You forgive him. But then the spirit says, that John that um, uh, stepped on your toe, can you get him a pair of watch? He doesn't have watch. And you're like, he stepped on my toe. I hope you heard my complaint. He stepped on my toe. He said, yes, get him a watch. So that when he, he's looking at his watch, he will see your toe. <laughs> the law of the spirit, Jesus said, is higher. It is higher than the mosaic law. Okay? And that's why people who walk by the Spirit, they stay obedient to God. Because they don't really care who benefits. They just want to do what God wants. Okay, now, I want to go quickly. Um, 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 
Remember what the scriptures say. So that you don't get into a self-pity party. Okay? First Corinthians 10, 13, he says, whatever you are going through, okay, others have gone through it. Uh, oh, yes. You know, but God is able. He said he will not allow you to be tested above what you are able to. And then the next statement, he said, with every test, he will provide what? Yes. And so, you see, once you hear that, you are in a challenge, you are in a situation, you go to God and say, there must be a way of, uh, oh, yes, there must be a way of escape. That's your word. That's your promise to me. There must be a way of escape. There must be. I cannot buckle under this pressure. I cannot yield to this temptation. There must be a way of escape. That's how the world changes us. And then you will hear the Spirit said, indeed, there is a way of escape. Look here. See here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because you, you, you know the word of God. Okay? So, so now, you can see that a lot of people, you know, many years ago, when they call us to speak on spiritual warfare, you know, we would be studying demonology. You know? You know what demonology is? They said, uh, witches that fly at night. <laughs> you know, have you had people talk like that? Yes. You know, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Do you know how ridiculous it is? Okay. All of us come in here you know, that in the night. There's no light. Okay. Somebody is saying, let us study darkness. You know, so that we can solve the... Yeah. Another person say, where is the switch? So we can put on the... Yes, so... Okay, a lot of people are studying darkness. How witches are flying. How they are not flying. You know? I said, what is my business with what, how they are flying? What is my business with how they are not flying? Where they are meeting? Where they are not meeting? What is my business? They are the ones to be studying me. Yes. You know, because the Bible says the solution to darkness is that. And so, if you come into a place with your light and darkness seems to still be operating, what will you do? Increase the intensity. Yes, it's simple. Eh? If we come here in the night and we only have one candle, ah, a lot of people will be still jamming the chair now. Abi. Yes. Okay, if we put on one bulb, you know, a, a few more places will have light. If we put on fluorescent, everywhere will... Uh, yes. So, it's not about darkness. It's about the intensity of light. You know? So, if you come into a place and it seems as if darkness is still... The powers of darkness are still... Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Go and search out how to increase your... Yes, that's all. That's all. The moment you increase your light, darkness disappears. Darkness disappears. Have you ever seen a situation where they put on the light and darkness say, I cannot go? <laughs> it is not possible. It is not possible. They cannot, they cannot put on light and darkness say, I cannot go. No. Anywhere you see darkness, it's not a function of the darkness. And its power is a function of light. The light is not enough. So how can I produce what we call incandescent light? The Bible says that God dwells in light unapproachable. In other words, that light is so bright that nobody, it is, it is like a million suns and more. Nobody can come close. First John 1 John 1.5 God is light. And in him is what? Okay. Let, let me hurry. Let me hurry. Empowerment. Everybody needs to know empowerment. Empowerment. It's so important. You know. And I've told you that the greatest empowerment is the divine presence. When Moses dwelt, spent hours in God's presence. What did the Bible say happened in, 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 uh, 
in uh, Exodus 34. He said when he came down, okay, there was a reflection of that uh, glory. That even men higher than angels could not behold it. Do you know that that's why angels have two wings to... Yes, they cover their face. They cannot look on the glory. They cannot look on the glory. And so when you are able to bring down the divine presence, you don't have to worry about your enemies. Yes. The divine presence will, deal, will take care of all of them. But you are concentrating. You are concentrating on bringing down the glory, bringing down the presence, bringing down the light. That's where the work is. That's where the work is. How to increase the intensity of my light to keep every darkness around me away from me. Now, go to, let's go to quickly, quickly, to Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3. In another vision, the Lord showed me the high priest. Verse 1, Joshua standing before the angel of the Lord. And there beside Joshua stood Satan, ready to bring an accusation against him. The angel of the Lord said to Satan, May the Lord condemn you, Satan. May the Lord who loves Jerusalem condemn you. This man is like a stick snatched from the fire. Joshua was standing there wearing filthy clothes. The angel said to his heavenly attendants, Take away the filthy clothes. This man is wearing. Then he said to Joshua, I have taken away your sin and I will give you a new clothes to wear. Okay, verse 5. He commanded the attendants to put a clean turban on Joshua's head. They did so. And then they put the new clothes on him while the angel of the Lord stood there. Now, verse 6. Verse 6. Then the angel told Joshua that the Lord Almighty has said, if, 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 Shakespeare says much virtue in if, if you obey my laws, if you perform the duties I've assigned you, then, as a result, you will continue to be in charge of my temple and its courts. And I will hear your prayers. Just as I hear the prayers of the angels who are in my presence. Listen then, Joshua, you who are the high priest. And listen, you fellow priests of his. You that are the sign of a good future. I will reveal my servant who is called a branch. Every believer must understand that the rules and principles governing spiritual empowerment, there are rules. I cannot uh, live anyhow, do anyhow, and I come, empower me, empower me, empower me. Oh, le le rila, empower me. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. They do not change those rules. They are the same whether in the Old Testament or the New Testament. Okay, we're told clearly in Hebrews 12, 14, try to be at peace with everyone and try to live a holy life because no one will see the Lord without it. No one. We're also told that only the pure in heart shall see God, Matthew 5, 8. Now, you might read this and just move on. Okay, another verse of scripture. But the passage in Zechariah chapter 3 forces us to stop and ponder, particularly for those who seriously want to be empowered. Now, the high priest Joshua, he came for empowerment. Okay? And there, what did they discover? The man had what? Filled the garments. And who was standing there to make sure they did not empower him? Satan was there. Now, do you know what I tell believers? Don't forget that the sat Satan cannot accuse you falsely. Before God. Jesus says Satan is the father of lies. But he cannot tell lies before God. Do you know why? Do you know why? You can only tell lies to somebody who doesn't know the truth. Yes, can only tell lies, you see. That's why when, they, when something breaks in my office and they say two people were on duty. You know, so what broke? They say one glass verse. I call this one. What happened to this glass, Oga? If this glass did for this hospital, me no, no, it's okay. I called the other one. What happened to this glass, Oga? Glass. I know they see glass safe. Yes, this glass is where they wear. You know that let me see glass. 
<laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, so tell me, what am I supposed to do? I don't know the truth. I say, okay, both of you, uh, well, what will I do? I don't know the truth. But you can't do that before God. He cannot do that before God. He knows the truth. And that's why if the devil is ready to accuse you and I before God, that list, those things he wrote there, that's true. That true. That's why the only way to deliver Joshua is sovereign grace. I reject this accusation. Clean the man, change his garment, change his uh, helmet. Oh, yes, that's what we call sovereign grace. It's undeserving. It's undeserving. Sovereign grace. Because God himself is the judge. He said, this, jo this um, uh, Joshua is like a stick plucked out of the fire. So, all your accusations rejected. Okay, so now after they've cleaned out Joshua, okay, then the angel came there and said, listen, Joshua, don't come here like this again. No. What God is saying is, when you now go back, obey um, God. If you do that, I will empower your authority. You know, there is authority and there is power. You know, that's our, 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 our passage. You know, um, Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you authority, exousia, to tread on serpents and powers, dunamis. They give you exousia to deal with dunamis. That tells you that you must have your own dunamis somewhere. Because if you have authority without power, authority is in danger. Oh, yes. You cannot have authority without power. There must be authority. And there must be power accompanying, backing it up. That's what happens in the, in, in, the, in the judicial system. That is the judge with the authority. That is the police with the power. And if the police don't back up the judge, the judge is in danger. The judge is in danger. Okay? So, so they give us authority. But we must be connected to the source of our power. And that's why they warned Joshua, said, you need to follow what God is saying. You need to obey God in your life. Okay? And then when you do that, now, this next statement is so important for you and I. He said, you can come in here like the angels. Okay? So if you need empowerment, if you need resources, okay, you can come in here like the angels. And I will answer your... Yes, I'll answer your needs. I'll meet your needs. Now, the question is, how can you and I, you know, appear before God like that? Because they had to clean out the man totally. They had to clean him out. How can we? Some people will say it's impossible. No, they made it possible. They made it possible. That's why you, you know the truth. The truth sets you free. Now, how did they make it possible? You know, because somebody may stay somewhere and say, well, maybe it's the people who can fast for 40 days. Maybe it's the people who can fast for 60 days. Maybe some people who can do dry fast for one week. <laughs> there is no such thing. They made it possible. Colossians 1, 21 and 22. That when you came through Christ, you know, what did he do for you and I? He made us holy. He made us unblameable. He made us unreprovable before God. So now, they have given me the secret. That's why we call it justification by faith. They have given me the secret to appear before God without a single spot. Without a single spot. So when I'm ready to appear before God, I must go before God and wash myself thoroughly in the blood of who? Jesus. Yes. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. So, I may not be very strong. I may not be very powerful. But I can still come. Because I have faith in the blood of Jesus. And when, when I say, Lord, the Apostle Paul calls it in 2 Corinthians 7.1. Cleansing myself from all filthiness of flesh and spirit. All. You know, I must cleanse myself. And so, and so when, I, when I cleanse myself in the blood of Jesus... I'm ready to appear before God. Okay, I'm ready to appear before God. But then, Hebrews 10, 19 and 20, it says, we have boldness to come before 
the presence of God through a new and living way that he has created. You know, a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil. And what is that veil? His flesh. What does that mean? What does that mean? So you need to, you need to hold this with two hands. My brother, my sister, you need to hold this with two hands. Because you see, after I'm washed in the blood of Jesus, I'm clean, I'm holy. But then I need purity. I need purity. And that purity is through the veil. And that veil is the body. And what is that body? It's the righteousness of Christ. So after I'm washed in the blood of Jesus, I clothe myself in the righteousness of who? Christ. Yes. And when I clothe myself in the righteousness of Christ, I can enter his presence. Because is that in that righteousness, I am completely pure. Because I have put on the pureness of who? Christ. First I get washed in his blood. Then I clothe myself. And then when I appear before him, what do I do there? I join the head angels and the archangels. I join the four living creatures. I join the four and twenty elders to give glory to God. And how do I give glory to God? Holy. Holy. Holy is the Lord God. Uh... Yes, that's what the angels do there. So, you see, when I have done all this and I appear before God and I'm singing with them, holy, 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 holy. After some time, the anointing comes down. Very simple. And then when it comes down, what am I asking for? Empowerment. So that I can do the will of God on earth. As it is done where? Yes. Empowerment. I need empowerment. To be able to overcome all the obstacles, all the challenges. To get all the help I need to stand for God on the earth. He said, the same way angels are getting empowered, the same way I come to get empowered. And that's how you discover strength that you knew you didn't have before. You know, every time you appear before God and you think, now, now since, since I, I discovered this, I can kneel down and be joining the angels to worship his holiness. Do you know that the, his holiness is the foundation of his power? They said the kingdom of God is established in what? Righteousness. Yes. God is light. There is no darkness in him. So there is compatibility. The moment I come cleansed, clothed in the righteousness of Christ, I appear before God and I'm worshiping with the angels in his holiness. The presence comes down. Now I can make my request. Now I can receive my instructions. Now I can receive directives about what to do and how to do and when to do. Oh yes, communion is so straightforward. And do you know the greatest thing about what I've just told you? Anybody and everybody can what? Do it. Anybody, everybody. You, know, you go home and you start doing it today. You have the same experience. You have the same experience. That you kneel down. You are determined to do the will of God. You are determined to, 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 to manifest the power of God in your life. Ah. That's the way. That is the way. Join the angels. He said to, he said to Joshua, I want you to be appearing like these angels for empowerment. And then you will become a sign of a great future. You and I will become the sign of a great future. Because we are empowered. We are now a people that are empowered. We become the sign of a great future. My brother, my sister, this morning, God wants you to know that you can become that sign of a great future. Not just for your life, not just for your family, not just for your church. You will also become that sign of a great future for the world around you. Can somebody say amen to that? Let us bow our heads to pray. There is nobody that is exempt from this. This is the wonderful thing about the kingdom of God. There are no special people there. There are no special people. There is nobody that his case is special. That when he comes, they open the door. And when you come, they won't open the door. Come through the same way. You know, purge yourself. Commit to living godly. Because he said to Joshua, empowerment and, and access will come through obedience. You see, once you commit to obeying my commandments, then you have access. Then you have empowerment. 
And so say to him, Lord, I cleanse myself now. I cleanse myself in the blood of Jesus. Lord, I clothe myself in the righteousness of Christ. Lord, I commit to obedience in all things. I receive grace to obey you in all things, big and small. I join the angels to sing holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy and holy and holy is the Lord God Almighty. The one who was and is and is to come. You alone are worthy to receive glory, honor, power, dominion, majesty and power. For you created all things and for your pleasure. We all exist and we are created. I worship your majesty, O oh Lord my God. And by your grace and by your power, I will do your will on this earth. I will become a vessel through whom your power is revealed to my generation. Oh, touch me like you have never touched me before. Show your grace, show your favor to me, oh God. Empower me that the world may hear you, know you, see you, touch you through me. Oh God, endorse me your servant. That's what Elijah prayed. Let the people know that I speak for God in this place. If a man of the old covenant can say that, Lord, let my world know that I speak for God. Everywhere I go, let men and women know that I represent God, that I speak for God, that I stand for God no matter what, no matter when, no matter where. Oh, Jesus, I want to be like you because you prayed. Father, I thank you. You hear me always. Yes. Lord, I want to pray the same. You hear me always. May your grace abound for me that I may live the life to which you have called me. Oh, pray that for yourself. Nobody can pray it for you. Lord, I'm determined to live the life to which you have called me. Let come what may. That the world may hear you, see you, touch you, know you through me. God wants to raise an empowered generation. Right here, right here, right now. Men and women who will determine today. I will walk with God with power. Nobody needs to know my name. Nobody needs to know where I come from. But heaven knows me. They know me in heaven. They know me. They know me. That's all that matters. If you are here this morning and you have not given your life to Christ, you won't benefit from anything I have said this morning. Because Jesus has to be in you and you have to be in Jesus for it to work. So if there's anyone here this morning, you have not given your life to Christ, I want to pray with you so that you will benefit. Jesus has to come into you and you have to be in him. So is there anyone here that has not happened to you? Then raise your hand. I want to pray with you. Is there anyone here? Quickly. Is there anyone? It's your opportunity. It is your opportunity this morning to enter in, into this. And it doesn't matter when you, if you enter this morning, you can be empowered this morning. Is there anyone? Yes. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else to join this young man? Come, come, my brother, come. Is there anyone else to join this young man? Is there anyone else? Nothing is going to happen until you are in Christ and Christ is in you. That's the beginning. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, put your right hand. Yes, okay, put your left hand. Say with me, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart now and be my Lord and be my savior 
I receive you now into my life as my Lord and Savior. Come and fill me with your spirit that from this day I will walk with you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, here is our brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, touch him now, O oh God. Let the Spirit of God enter him mightily and restore him to normal. Thank you for hearing us. May your Spirit guide him all through his life. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, follow. Follow our. Yes, follow him. Can you give the Lord a big hand there? Shall we all rise then? Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it, Lord. And make me whole. One more time. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and pain. This testing of my soul. Love heaven fill me till I want no more fill my cup fill it Lord and make me whole. okay say with me oh Lord my God I come before you washed in the blood of Jesus I come into your presence clothed in the righteousness of Christ. I join the angels. I join the archangels. I join the four and twenty elders to sing holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Oh Lord my God, Empower me this hour. Empower me this moment to go into my world and live the life of Jesus Christ that the kingdom of our God may prosper. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, take a moment and pray in other tongues. Take a moment and pray in other tongues. Take a moment. Take a moment. To consolidate what you have done now. In Jesus name we have prayed. Heavenly Father look upon your people. As many as sincerely desire to be empowered. And Lord as they have come into your holy presence. Empower them I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. May your Holy Spirit touch each one. May your spirit infuse energy into their spirit man. In the name of Jesus Christ. That they walk daily with boldness. They walk with authority. And they can bring down your presence into their world. We thank you, O oh God. For from henceforth your people will walk as an empowered generation. For it is in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And all God's people said...